I have a little experience coming across people with, uh, you know, basically unchecked optimism. When I was dealing with people in the uh, entrepreneurs, you know, uh, with startup companies, mainly high technology companies. This, this group of people typically very optimistic. Their optimism is, you know, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's, on the one hand, it's something to envy. Their excitement, their enthusiasm, it's kind of a, you can, you can sense the energy, the positive energy that they have behind their vision, their business, right? Their passion. And it's not just the high-tech entrepreneurs, of course. It's anybody who, who, who creates something of their own, has something of their own, molds it, right? Whether it's a, a, a small uh, flower shop or, you know, a high-tech uh, business venture. But it's a double-edged sword because this same optimism that's absolutely 100% required of any would-be entrepreneur and once again I don't know if I've released the audios on the entrepreneur versus small business person uh, that I that I uh, previously talked about but I'm talking about someone who has a, a goal of, of, of creating some type of a business that's you know it's not a standard business something a big dreamer right if you're dreaming big you're doing something no one's ever done or you're doing it in a way no one's ever done before right then you need to have this type of optimism you need to have a very strong sense of of optimism right it has to be kind of like an infection and i've seen it i've come across these people it's an admirable trait because they just keep going right but once again it is a double-edged sword because you can't get through to these people. And this is something that I learned firsthand, uh, you know, in trying to, trying to assist, uh, you know, entrepreneurs or, you know, early stage company executives, or even in some cases, angel investors uh, in their dealings with startup companies can't get through to them it's very difficult because they're set in their ways right so and also you've got guys that just don't quit even though the writing is on the wall and everybody can see it they won't quit so they'll spend years and years and years and their complete life savings so you know that type of optimism I think has a purpose right it's, it's from within, and it's for one's own passion, one's own dreams, one's own goals. There's a big difference between that type of optimism versus the, you know, the, the crowd mentality optimism, right? Whereby you're supposed to behave positively. You should not criticize anyone, and if you do, you get criticized have you ever noticed that right you're not supposed to criticize someone for being a charlatan or a con artist or exploiting or deceiving people even though you have a very solid case behind your argument right you get criticized you're the bad person for doing that or you may come across you know someone will respond oh, I don't like people who criticize others or I don't like people who talk bad about other people. I just don't know where this began. You know, how this how this became embedded in our modern society. Was it something from what they've been teaching the kids in school for, I don't know, 20 years or something? I don't know. But it seems like that it, it's, I don't, it's certainly not a part of a traditional political correctness. Uh, that's for certain. But I think that somehow it has been embedded within this political correctness uh, scam and maybe as a way to serve as a defensive mechanism uh, to prevent people 
from criticizing the political correctness uh, mentality, right? Nonetheless, I just wanted to, to you know, uh, uh, bring up this discussion once again about this 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 optimism and positivity that we're all supposed to adapt. And if we're not this way, then we're the problem. And I'm here to tell you that it's people who are out there questioning things and individuals, right? Raising the difficult questions. And, you know, not doing so necessarily in a very hostile or combative way, unless the people are obviously con artists. And unfortunately, there are many of those out there, obvious con artists. But doing so in a manner that actually should encourage an open debate or uh, the individual or individuals or entities to, to address your concerns. But instead, you're shunned. This is the problem, folks. There's not enough people who are ready, willing, and able to stand up and say, hey, wait a second. Let's ask some questions here. What's going on, right? So this is a force that I believe serves as one of the principal facilitators of this whole environment or world that we live in today, which is filled with a countless variety and supply of con artists and scams. No matter where you look, it, it, it doesn't seem to have any type of limitation. 